this is Dr. Nurse. I'm in my office, and I want to give you a little introduction on our new web book called Spectroscopy is Imagery. One of the things I really want to emphasize is the fact that the only way this is going to work is if you look at lots of images. So, for example, if you're studying the infrared spectrum, spectra of alcohols, you have to look at 5 to 10 spectra of alcohols so that you'll start to understand the topography and landscape of alcohols. If you are looking at the NMR of alcohols, you would do the same thing. Now, where do you get the spectra to look at? In the book, we have included several spectra with each functional group, but you're going to have to also access spectra that are on the web. And on our website, we have a link on our virtual library, we have a link to a website called the Integrated Spectral Database. And if you go on that website, you can get all kinds of spectra. So you are being there's going to be links in the book. You're going to be encouraged to click into those links and look up at different alcohols. You're actually given certain compounds to look up. Okay, now, um, so again, summing up, the idea behind this is not to just memorize positions of peaks, but rather to look at lots of images so the images start to stick in your head and you start to learn what the characteristic features or the topography or the landscape is of each functional group. And I'm going to keep emphasizing this. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about infrared spectrum first, okay, just to give you the idea behind what you're doing. What does infrared spectroscopy involve? This unit is not about theory. Theory will be covered in class and in your textbook, but um, I want to give you just a little bit of an idea about it, okay? Molecules have bonds, bonds vibrate. They have, and so when I mean vibrate, the bond is actually stretching and bending. These stretching and bending vibrations are at characteristic frequencies. So for example, a CH bond has a very distinctive frequency at which it vibrates. Um, a CC bond vibrates at a completely different frequency. And they have several different ways they vibrate, so there are several frequencies for each bond. Okay, it happens that these bond vibrational frequencies are exactly the same as the frequencies you find in the infrared band of electromagnetic radiation. So what happens if when you pass the exact same infrared frequency into a sample that has a bond vibrating at the same frequency as that infrared frequency, that bond will absorb the frequency. Okay, so you have a bond that's vibrating. The infrared, this is a wave phenomenon, right? You have a wave coming in. That's a wave phenomenon, obviously, frequency we're talking about here. If the two frequencies are exactly the same, the bond will absorb the frequency, and what will happen is the bond's amplitude of vibration goes up as it absorbs the energy, and, but the frequency stays the same. Okay, and we're going to talk more about that in class. When energy is absorbed, you see a peak. It's translated into a peak. The more energy that's absorbed, the bigger the peak is. Okay? Where the, the frequency at which the energy is absorbed is very dependent on the bond. Okay? So, are you going to be obsessing about this in this exercise? No. You're going to be looking for topographies of different functional groups. Now, the IR spreads from about 4,000 reciprocal centimeters, you'll see this when you start observing spectra, to 400 reciprocal centimeters. But what I want you to look at is about 1,500 reciprocal centimeters to 4,000 reciprocal centimeters. Okay, this is called the functional group region. And that's the topography we're going to work on this semester. Okay, so for example, supposing I had an alcohol, just to start with something simple. Supposing I had this alcohol, all right? This alcohol has vibrations that absorb in this part of the spectrum, 4,000 to 1,500 reciprocal centimeters. Now, these are very weird units, but for the time being, I want you to know that reciprocal centimeters are proportional to frequency. So when you go in this direction, the frequency is increasing. This molecule has bond vibrations that are in this region and other bond vibrations that are down in this region, 
We call this the fingerprint region. For now, the fingerprint region is too complex and we're not going to study its topography or its landscape. But the alcohol would show very distinctive features in this part of the spectrum. What would we expect? We would expect a big broad peak at around 3300, and I'm showing you this schematically so that you can, you can start looking at spectra. And then my scale is just way off here, but then you would see probably a couple spikes at around 2900 or so. Okay, this is off scale. That's all you would see in the functional group region. What are you seeing? The big broad peak is due to the OH stretching vibration. And the peaks you would see here would be the CH stretching vibrations. Almost every organic molecule would have peaks in this region. These are very specific CH stretching vibrations. They are what we call SP3 stretching vibrations. But what I want you to do is look at the spectrum we gave you or the spectra, really, that we gave you in the exercise, and then go to the spectral database and look up a whole bunch of alcohols. And what you'll discover is they all look pretty much the same down in this region, as long as they are simple alcohols like this. Okay? Now, where are the rest of the bonds? The rest of the bonds are in the fingerprint region, and it's going to be hard for you right now to pick out the topography. Okay, now, supposing we had something more complex. Where are we with time, Clem? About six and a half minutes. Six and a half minutes, okay. So we can do one more. Let's do one more functional group. Supposing we have something like this, 4,000 reciprocal centimeters down to 400 reciprocal centimeters, okay. Supposing we had something very different like... Um, this is a little, little, little tougher, an aromatic ring with a carbonyl, okay? What would you expect to see for this molecule? Well, this is much more complex, okay? You would expect to see this kind of bond, which is an sp2ch, and I want you to think about that. Why am I calling that an sp2ch? You would also expect to see for this molecule sp3ch's. This is not a bad exercise, the way I'm writing out all the bonds in the molecule. The other thing I'd expect to see in the functional group region are the C, C, you know, pseudo double bonds. They're not really double bonds. They're like one and a half pi bond. The rest of the bonds where, oh, one more thing. I'd expect to see this C double bond O stretching vibration in, this, in the functional group region. Now, I go over this in the text. I tell you what is in there, all right? So what would I expect the spectrum to look at, look like between say, 4,000 and 1,500. I would expect to see a couple spikes at about 3,050. Now, you're not going to want to know these numbers. You just want to look at this topography. Then I expect to have a couple more spikes around 3,000, around 2,900. I'm being very, a little too specific here with the numbers. I don't want you to be that specific. Then I would expect to see a really sharp spike at about 1,700. I'm being approximate there. And then another, at least one spike at about 1,600. And another spike at 1,500. It would also not be surprising to see several bumps in the baseline right there. All right, now what am I seeing? This right here is the SP2 CH. This is the SP2. 3CH. So all these bonds, CH bonds, on the aromatic ring are absorbing there. These CHs and these CHs are absorbing here. This is the carbonyl. Carbonyls are always at 1700 because they vibrate at a frequency that is proportional to 1700 reciprocal centimeters. These are due to the aromatic ring, as are these little, little bumps. I take each functional group individually so you'll get used to the topography, okay? This is just to give you a little bit of a exposure, but you're going to learn, again, by looking at many spectra of each individual functional group. And then at the end, we're going to have some problems where we mix it up like this. Okay, that's the end. So, so work on it, and good luck with it, and ask if you have questions.